If you want to avoid puppy accidents in your home and you want to limit the chewing to just toys and not your walls, shoes, or furniture, you're going to want to grab today's tips to set up your puppy space, which includes a crate and a puppy playpen. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the best place to keep your crate and puppy pen and what should be in the pen and crate to play with and what you should never be putting in there as it will encourage accidents and make potty training your puppy so much more difficult. Be sure to hit the like button so others can see this valuable content as well. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button so you can grab next week's training lesson too. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Okay, if you have brought your little bundle of fluff home recently, congrats! Now, the very first thing I want you to do is avoid the most common new puppy owner mistake. Do not give your puppy access to your whole home right away. This is what most puppy owners do and it leads to a lot of headaches down the road. You'll be cleaning up accident after accident if you don't start to limit your puppy's space. Plus, it will allow your puppy access to chew on things like shoes, furniture, walls, and things they're not supposed to. For more info on this and other tips for new puppy owners, don't forget to grab the free new puppy starter kit from the link below this video. All right, back to crate and puppy pen setup. New puppies don't know you need them to go potty outside or that you don't want them to chew on your belongings. They have to be taught not to do this. The more space you give your puppy, the more accidents they're going to have, and this means you're gonna be cleaning up accidents frequently. This also means they're going to want to explore their surroundings and although this is great and we want them to experience all that your home has to offer, we don't want them to get into trouble, especially when you're not watching. This is why we use a puppy pen setup. Your puppy should have access to one room at a time and the best thing to do right now is to set up a puppy pen, which is going to include your puppy's crate. This is going to give your puppy enough room to play but limit the space that they have to play in so that you don't have to continue to clean up accidents all over your house and your puppy's not going to get into trouble. Since your puppy pen will also include your puppy's crate, your puppy is going to start to love to go in their crate to take their naps. All puppies need naps, especially when they get overstimulated. Puppies have FOMO <laughs> or fear of missing out. This means that if something more exciting is going on and they need a nap, they're, not go they're gonna try to stay up as long as possible and pay attention to all those distractions. Crate training is not just for bedtime, as we wanna teach our puppies that they can go in their crate periodically throughout the day, not just at nighttime. So if you're looking for more specific crate training tips, especially to get your puppy to sleep through the night, I'm gonna recommend this video. All right, to set up your puppy's pen, you're going to need either a metal or plastic crate and a puppy pen. When you pick your puppy's crate, you want to pick the crate that's just the right size for your puppy. Not too big and definitely not too small. Your puppy should have just enough room to turn around and lay down in their crate. If their crate is too big, you're going to likely have more accidents in their crate, as they're probably going to try to go potty in one spot and play or sleep in the other. Most of the black metal crates come with a divider, so you're going to want to use that to make the space smaller in their crate. I don't keep soft, squishy bedding in their crate as this really just encourages accidents and may lead to a destroyed bed or ingested pieces of stuffing from the bed. Once your puppy is past the chewing and teething stage, then you can add a bed in their crate. This is typically past six months or older for some puppies um, that actually need to wait even longer, maybe past the year mark because they just love to destroy beds. Don't waste your money on continually buying beds if your puppy is a chewer. Your puppy will be just fine on the crate floor, I promise. I would rather you keep your puppy safe instead of accidentally ingesting something that they need to have surgically removed. Now, this puppy pen here, this one's my absolute favorite. I love it because it's tall and the bars are vertical, which means your puppy's going to be less likely to climb their puppy pen and escape. I'll put a link to both the crate and the puppy pen in the description below. 
Now, we want to make sure that our puppy can't climb on top of the crate and escape, so you're going to want to block off the top part of the crate so that they don't have access to it. Your puppy pen is going to be used for the times that you want your puppy to play, but maybe you can't supervise them 100%. It's perfect for the times that you're making meals, cleaning the house, folding the laundry, or other household chores that require your eyes to be away from supervising your puppy. Using the puppy pen is also a great way to start to teach our puppies that they can be by themselves and they don't have to be glued to us every minute of the day. We want to avoid any opportunity for separation anxiety to occur. So teaching your puppy how to play by themselves or self-soothe in their puppy pen, this will be a great start. Now, if you're wondering how long your puppy should spend in their puppy pen, make sure that you check out that free new puppy starter kit you're going to find a sample puppy schedule inside there. It's under the potty training lesson. This will give you an idea of how long your puppy should be playing, how long they should be in their crate with the door closed, how frequently you should be taking your puppy outside, and when to feed your puppy their meals. The best ways to get your puppy to absolutely love their crate is to feed them in the, their meals in their crate. There are some other really great tips inside this video all about crate training too. You can use a puzzle feeder or a slow bowl feeder inside their crate, or you can sprinkle their kibble on the bottom of the crate floor and they can eat it there if they're a fast eater. By sprinkling their food on the bottom of the crate tray, you're actually teaching them that this is the place to eat, not go to the bathroom. Typically, they don't like to eat where they go to the bathroom. Just remember, if you use one of the puzzle feeders or the slow bowl feeder, just make sure you remove it about 10 minutes after they're done eating. You don't want your puppy to think it's a toy and continue to chew on it when you're not looking. I also don't keep water in their crate as this can make a mess and it actually sets your puppy up for failure because they're probably going to have to go to the bathroom a few minutes after drinking. Remember, we never want to encourage a puppy to go potty inside their crate. This is one reason we do not put puppy pee pads in the crate or pee pads in the pen either. I have a really good video on this as to why I never use pee pads unless it's a medical reason. So check out this video for more details. I do periodically put water down in their peppy pen when they're out playing or when they are out of their pen and I'm watching them like a hawk. <laughs> so we avoid accidents in the house. I don't leave it down all the time as most puppies like to play in it and it becomes a mess. It's far better to keep track of how much water you're giving them so that you know how frequently you need to take them out. The general rule of thumb is one ounce of water per pound of dog per day. But we don't want to dehydrate our dogs so just make sure that if you notice that your puppy's thirsty, give them some more water and take them out more frequently. I do pick up water by about 7 p.m. each night and they might get a little sick before bedtime if they're playing hard or running around and I see that they're thirsty. Making sure their water is picked up by 7 p.m. will also help you with potty training and will help them last longer through the night. They won't have to go potty in the middle of the night as frequently. Now, the kinds of toys that you're going to keep in their puppy pen are the ones that can't easily be destroyed especially if you're going to give them stuffed toys or rope toys without supervising them. You're just setting your puppy up for danger. Most puppies want to pull soft, squishy toys apart and remove the stuffing or the squeaker or pull the rope apart because it's a lot of fun. Once ingested, they tend to have to be surgically removed in most cases. I don't want that to happen to your puppy. Now, the kinds of toys that you can keep in your puppy's pen would include Nyla bones, marrow bones, antlers, harder toys that cannot easily be destroyed. You might even put a Baba Lot toy in there. I'll put a link to that toy in the description below. I actually use this toy when I want to keep my puppy busy in their pen or slow down their eating if they're eating too fast. It's even a great way to create a positive association with being in their puppy pen or their crate because they're going to be batting at it and rolling it around and trying to figure out how to get the treats or the kibble out of it. Your puppy pen and crate setup should be in a location that gives you the opportunity to periodically peek in on them, but doesn't completely isolate them from the rest of everyone or everything else going on in your home. Now, before I give you the last bit of advice in regards to setting up your puppy's crate and the playpen, make sure you hit subscribe so you get notified when next week's video goes live. All right, here we go with the last tip. 
I recommend that you use some rubber playroom tiles or a piece of plywood under your puppy pen. This will protect your floors in case there's an accident. I discourage you from keeping your puppy pen on any carpet because once an accident happens, it is very hard to remove that urine smell. You can use products like Nature's Miracle to clean up any accident. Um, this has an enzyme in it which breaks down the ammonia found in their urine and this does help to neutralize that urine. I put a link uh, to that in the description below as well, but ultimately it has to seep all the way down to the pad and the subfloor to neutralize that urine smell. So you'll need quite a bit to saturate the area. This is why I try to put a protective layer down in case there are any accidents. In the comments below, tell me, where are you going to be keeping your puppy playpen and crate setup?